from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, April 28th to Saturday, May 4th. So last week we had the full moon in Scorpio pop off on the 23rd. And of course that was a pretty intense energy. It was supposed to be, it had to be in order to kind of get rid of the old fragments of self. Of course, there was a lot of residue left over from eclipse season when of course we kind of split off into our higher selves and we recognize the old parts of self and those particular fragments were what had to be let go of, what had to be released, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities of that old egoic programming in order for the parts that were left over to be merged back together into a state of wholeness, into a state of completion. We now have this new version of self, new wants, needs, and desires, new programming for us to kind of use. And again, it's called to practice for a reason. Use every single time that we have old situations, old triggers, old activations arise in order to test us. Have we learned anything? Are we still reacting out of ego or are we pressing pause before there's an emotional reaction at all and acting as the observer, get to see the bigger, broader test, get to see the bigger, broader picture, whether or not we actually learned anything and of course respond from our higher selves. Side note, many people have failed. Uh, Not trying to be a Debbie Downer, just stating based off of my Um, clients and what they've gone through, many people found themselves in a very reactive state to triggers to activations testing them from the external source. Now, does that mean that all is lost? No, it just means that we need to practice more. And how do we practice? We have life throw us triggers and activations. The whole point is that you do not allow yourself to emotionally react from egoic programming looping patterns, looping behaviors. We want to press pause, recognize that the world is coming at us for this particular test, step back, act as the observer, call it out for exactly what it is, and then respond from your higher self, seeing the greater, grander picture actually pieced together in where it is that you have an opportunity to pass said test and evolve, graduate to the next level of awareness. Of course, it was hard to see clearly because of course, Mercury was still retrograde. We just had Mercury go direct here on the 25th. So if you're joining me here live in the chat Friday evening, first of all, I wanna thank you for being here. Secondly, we still have yet to basically adjust to Mercury's direct motion. He's just starting to kind of open up his eyes. He's starting to realize that he was drugged unconscious for the last couple of weeks. And now he just needs a little bit of time to get his bearings. It's not gonna take him that long. He's in Aries energy, it's a fire energy. So we're likely going to piece things together very quickly. We have this opportunity to get hyper-focused on the path, on the plan, on the strategy, getting super concentrated on what needs to happen, getting our mind right before this week happens. Why you may ask? Okay, well, first of all, we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money shifting into Taurus energy. That's her rulership. That is her placement of power. That's going to be taking place on the 29th. Then we have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, moving into Aries energy, his place of power. So that's going to be taking place on the 30th. Again, if you need to go back, listen to the April energy forecast that I put out over a month ago to kind of recognize the domino effect of all of these energies working together. That's why Mercury going direct prior to Venus and Mars moving into their respective rulerships is so dang important. We get a couple of days to get focused, to get our minds right before we're going to be able to take action and make moves. That's right. Green light go ahead coming at us here towards the end of April moving into May. Let's talk about that. We are going to be closing April off. We are going to be moving into May. May, of course, is going to have its own set of life lessons. And again, coming at you here over the course of this week, there will be an entire May energy forecast. But just know that May is going to be equally as crazy and chaotic, just in a different way. Yeah, there's a slower pace, but we're going to start seeing the physical manifestation 
of a lot of the energies that got downloaded through April. So yeah, April was a wackadoodle month because of the eclipse energies, because it overlapped with Mercury's retrograde, but also that was just the energies being downloaded. That was the spark, the fire, the flame being ignited, so to speak. May is when we actually start physically seeing the changes and transformations. And for many people, that can almost be as crazy and chaotic more so than just the energies kind of all over the place, swirling, whirling, and being downloaded. So we definitely have a major shift on our hands. And moving into May, the very first day of May, we have the last quarter moon popping off in Aquarius energy. You wanna talk about a new level of awareness. You wanna talk about a new level of consciousness you want to talk about some aha moments and some epiphanies that are going to pop off to really set the tone, set the pace on what it is that we're going to be doing as we head into May. It is going to be a major revelation of sorts. And it's happening just one day prior to Pluto, the great transformer himself going retrograde on the second in this Aquarius energy. That should be interesting. Now, let me just say that as I'm coming to you here um, Friday evening, you know, live in the chat, thank you very much for being here. Uh, it's the 26th of April. From now until May 2nd, which isn't a very, very large amount of time here, this is the only sector of time for the rest of 2024 that all planets will be direct. That is right, very short amount of time to have all planets be direct. When Pluto goes retrograde, that kicks off a domino effect of all of these major heavy hitting planets going retrograde, taking us all the way throughout the rest of the year and carrying us in to 2025. So we definitely have some refinement to do. Again, reminder, anytime that we have a retrograde planet, the energy then gets internalized. We have to move inward, meaning that there's some inner work that has to be done before we're going to see the next level of change and transformation in our physical realms. And so this is going to be a back and forth testing period from now to the end of the year. And again, reminder, we are in the year of eight. We ain't messing around. You want to F around, you're going to find out here in the year of eight. This is about power. This is about control, especially with who it is that you are. How authentic are you? How whole and complete are you? How much power and control do you have over your mind, over your emotions, over your actions, over your ability to actually create the realm and reality that you want to be living in? So we are being tested back to back, exam time, back to back, in order for us to receive our, let's call it graduation into 2025. And again, if you need to go back, listen to the 2024 year ahead readings that I put out there for this entire year, focus on this particular month, this sector of the calendar, you're going to understand when you listen all the way through that each month from now until the end of 2024 gives us a very unique opportunity to get this new version of self primed up, ready, prepared for this next chapter. And of course, there are chapters within chapters and there's chapters within chapters and then there's side quests and there's whole, you know, video game strategy. However, this is a power building year. And Pluto, the great transformer himself, that brings a whole hell of a lot of destruction in order to clear the space, in order for us to build something new in the place of the things that are no longer strong enough to actually support and encourage us in moving forward. At two degrees in Aquarius energy, you best believe we got to go inward now. We got to piece some things together. You want to talk about inner revelations. You want to talk about inner epiphanies. This is definitely going to pop off in some serious ways. And again, I have a whole May energy forecast coming at you here this week with those Zodiac forecasts as well. We'll talk about that here in just a second. And that is going to kind of set the tone on what it is that we're supposed to be building in, building towards throughout the month of May. Major, major changes, not only in our physical realm, but we're going to have an acceleration of time, of energy, of options, of opportunities really grace our presence towards the end of May. 
So that's what this week is all about. And it's definitely setting the tone. It's building us up in a certain way in order for us to hit the ground running in May. Now I know Pluto goes retrograde. That doesn't stop the changes and the transformations in the odor realm. It just means that we have some inner boss up work to do while we're taking action and making moves in alignment with our higher selves in the external realm. So this is, again, power struggle between old version of self, new version of self, old ways of doing things, new ways of doing things. We're going to have plenty of opportunities to really challenge this inner struggle, this power struggle within us in order to validate that the higher self definitely needs to take the lead. And again, with the pop-offs of revelations of epiphanies, it will be a very easy thing to see if you're acting as the observer. But if you are still operating from your egoic programming, reacting to everything coming at you, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to really boss up. You're behind in a sense. Now, I hate to say that because on one side of the coin, I truly believe that everything happens exactly as it should in divine timing. And we're all exactly where it is that we need to be. But at the same time, we just came out of this eclipse energy that we as a collective failed miserably uh, to actually align with the higher timelines. And so individually speaking, there's a lot of chaos right now because we're all trying to figure out where it is that we're at. The 52 cards, the deck that we threw up in the air through eclipse season, all those cards are starting to fall and we're starting to see which ones are face up and face down and we're starting to see what hand we've actually been dealt. And this is why everybody is just wackadoodle trying to figure out the version of themselves that they're actually anchoring in right now and what timeline they actually ended up on. Everybody is all over the place, scattered energy. That's okay. We're going to figure it out. However, a lot of people failed miserably in the sense of that they're still reacting to the outside external realm, you know, relationship problems. And then you get all up in a tizzy financial problems. You get all up in a tizzy instead of stepping back and operating from the higher self and saying, Hmm, this looks like a test. I did this previous to, you know, in these types of situations, what could I do differently? What could I do? So out of the realm of my normal ways of acting or seeing or perceiving or responding, what could I do differently? Nobody's doing that. They're just full blown in ego reactive mode. And it's very disappointing. So if you are one of those people, you got to boss up. It doesn't look good for you at this particular point on your timeline. And so you really have to give your head a shake and really, really do the work within yourself to understand why it is that you keep giving your egoic programming the power and control over you. Okay, that's my little mini rant for this little intro. And you know, I'm not that far into things, I'm not far into this rant. So that was a, just a little bit of a tough love life lesson that I have observed that People have failed miserably coming out of this eclipse energy, and it isn't the kind of energy that I was hoping to see. Nonetheless, for those of you that are passing these tests with flying colors, and there are, uh, good for you. Thank you for doing the work. Thank you for holding the space. Thank you for kind of, you know, anchoring it in and holding the line in order for some of these people that didn't pass the test to get their shit together. Because again, we're going to have multiple opportunities to boss up, multiple timeline jumps, multiple opportunities to anchor in this new version of self. You gotta get your mind right. You gotta get your heart right. You gotta step into your power. You gotta know who it is that you are. Your authenticity is your superpower. So lean the F into it. Okay, so. Before I jump into the ascension symptoms for this week and probably a couple of other tangents on the way, uh, I just have a couple of things that I would like to say, starting with thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting. I want to thank you to the newbies to this channel. Apparently, YouTube, I don't know if they heard me trash talking or it's just their algorithm or what is going on here, but I've had my channel kind of shown to new people. Thank goodness. Now, does that mean that the new people just finally reach the vibration and frequency where they are attracted to my vibration and frequency, my information, my message? I don't know, but I'm grateful for it. And of course, for the original OGs, I want to thank you for continuing to give me the love and support that I truly appreciate, that I truly, truly value. Okay, so 
as I previously mentioned, we're moving into a new month and I will have that May energy forecast available to you here over the next couple of days. With that being said, there's going to be Zodiac forecasts in order to kind of give you a guidance system in order for you to align with the energies that are going to be impacting the area of your life throughout the month of May. You can access all 12 of those Zodiac forecasts on my Patreon or you can download them individually from my website when they're up, when they're ready to be downloaded, when they're available. May I also just remind you that the Taurus Season e-guide is a super, super, super helpful resource. If you haven't downloaded it already, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you want to be doing the work, if you want to stay in alignment, if you want to stay ahead of the energies, these are the resources that you need to be checking in with. This is like capturing the energy shifts as it happens. And it's a good reference to have to look back upon when we get to certain aspects and certain astro events here over the next couple of months. You're going to have to reflect back to this particular point in time in order to understand the tests, the challenges, the obstacles, the opportunities, the options that you're going to have available to you here in no time at all. But a lot of the answers that you're going to be looking for in a futuristic sense are found in this particular present moment. And that's why I create the guides in order for you to really, truly capture what is going on with you and for you, what's against you, what is supporting you. This is where you have to be doing the work. So I am going to recommend that you download that Taurus season e-guide. We are just getting started here in Taurus season. We have major energy events still left to take place over the course of the next couple of weeks that is definitely going to be the foundation and structure because that's what Taurus season is all about building a foundation and structure that is going to be strong enough to house the vision the goal the dreams that we're still trying to piece together in this particular moment so again just a reminder those resources are there to help and guide you please use them okay so I'm not going to spend any more time uh, talking about any kind of other fluff because really it's not important other than the fact that I think it's super important and I've had people ask me this over the last couple of weeks why do y'all take so much time to thank us when we should be thanking you because you're the one giving us free content well great question however I am totally 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 always going to take the time to thank each and every single one of you here's the thing guys time is valuable energy is valuable attention is valuable it's the currency that i appreciate the most so when you're taking the time to listen to what it is that i have to say i need to thank you for that when you are spending your energy absorbing the information and the messages that i'm sharing i need to thank you for that and when you are giving me your attention oh my goodness that is the best gift that you could give anyone so yes, I understand that, you know, there's a there's a very beautiful exchange of of love and support and thank yous going on in the comment section here. But that's why I take the time to thank you, because I truly appreciate it, not just because you're you're giving this to me, but because you're doing the work. The collective thanks you. The universe thanks you. The greater, grander plan thanks you for showing up for giving me attention to the information that's going to help expand your consciousness to get us out of these constructs, out of this restriction, this part of the matrix, this part of humans evolution. So yes, each and every single time that I have the opportunity, I am going to sit down and thank you. And I thank you for thanking me. So thank you. Okay, let's talk about the ascension symptoms. First of all, um, I think it would be a good recommendation to go back and listen to last week's Ascension forecast because the shift that we're coming out of still kind of lingering from last week. We are going to see a transitional period into this week, but a lot of the things that I'm talking about this week, we talked about last week, not in the same way, but if you're wondering where I'm, you know, getting my information from what I'm talking about last week. Okay. So we talked about the Truman Show. We talked about how everything feels like foreign and fake and like a movie set. Well, things are changing. Things are becoming more real. That particular, let's call it illusion, is wearing off. Reason being, and again, I got to back up here, eclipse season, guys, 
was a major, major shakeup for the collective. It basically shook us all up to see where our energy, our authenticity was actually lying within us. It gave us an opportunity to bring this new version of self that essentially we just gave birth to back in August, September of 2023, that we brought forth in the fall under that new moon in Scorpio, that again, this full moon in Scorpio that we just had cleansed us of the fragmented parts of the old version of self, the old realm and reality from that particular point in time. So the Truman Show effect was because we essentially were new versions of self walking into a physical realm that was very comfortable, very familiar to the old version of self, not so much to the new version of self. And here's the thing, that full moon in Scorpio that we just had removed the heaviest parts, the heaviest weight of the old version of self. So now it, things are looking more familiar. Things are a little bit more comfortable. They're not as foreign. They're not as fake. They're not as movie set ish. And a lot of that, again, not only the full moon and Scorpio help us out, but we're in Taurus season. This is a, again, how I talked in, in last week's forecast, we had this like huge expansion of consciousness of our energetic soul self. And Taurus season is taking that expanded energetic version of self and shoving us back into this physical form. And that's why things, you know, at the very beginning, were very uncomfortable. I think we're starting to kind of get comfortable in it now. Um, but, you know, this is about solidifying, realigning, recalibrating the inner realm and the outer realm. This is like a, an amalgamation of all of those, you know, different parts of self that we're now, you know, stuffing back into the vessel and, and merging back together. And so the Truman Show is kind of over, over-ish. I mean, we are always going to have little bits of glimmer where we're like, oh, yeah, we're definitely on a movie set. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm being watched. Yeah, I can see the patterns, the programs, the behaviors coming at me. There's always going to be moments of that. But we're starting to, again, be a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more familiar in our physical form, in our physical surroundings. Time slowed down. Now, it's funny, you know, I, I think if you go back and you listen to me talking about the transition of moving out of Aries energy and moving into Taurus energy, the very first thing that I say is that at the very beginning, it's going to feel like we hit a brick wall. It's going to feel like we are running underwater is going to feel like we're in quicksand trying to move really fast, but we just keep sinking type of thing. And I, it just blows my mind how many people reach out to me, you know, when we just kind of are moving into these new energies and they're like, wow, it feels like time stopped. It feels like I'm like, I can't even move. I feel so heavy. I feel so weighted. Haven't been able to get out of bed. Haven't been able to do this. Those are all Taurus energies. I talked about them very specifically. And I don't know if it's that people aren't listening or they don't believe until it happens, or it does happen, and they're like, damn, she said that? I'm not sure how it happens, but the wave of people that reach out to me and be like, damn, you know, time slowed down, I feel heavy, I feel this way, I feel that way. I mean, I, I don't know what else I'm supposed to say. Like, I did tell you, you know, I, I did prepare you for this, um, but it's just interesting to me that, especially Taurus season in its entirety, because my Taurus peeps out there, I'm not trying to crap on you in any kind of way, but earth energies, especially Taurus energies, y'all need to be in the situation in order to truly understand it. Like my Taurus clients or Taurus dominus placements, I could tell them over and over and over again, like, this is what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself in this situation. This is the way you're going to think. This is the way you're going to feel. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 And then they actually get in the situation that I tried to prepare them for. And they're like, oh, my God, this is the way I felt. This is the way I thought you all literally need to be in that present moment in order to understand. And it's trust me, I come from a family of all Earth energies. I'm a water sign. So y'all like really take a good look around at your family members and what energies they are, because that's going to tell the tale. Like people want to know. People always say like, oh, what's your zodiac sign? No, I don't care. I need to know, I need to know the environment that you grew up with. I need to know the elemental energy profile of your family. Because like I said, I'm a water sign that grew up in an earth dominant family. You best believe I am frustrated as F with these earth people. Why? Because you all don't have foresight. Y'all don't have, you know, any kind of realm of experience until you all are in that moment. 
And I just find it really funny because when the transition happens and we find ourselves in a new energy, all these people come out and repeat back to me what I've been saying for weeks. And I'm like, I, 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 I know, I get it. I 100%, I get it. I understand totally. Anyways, I thought that was funny. I thought I should share that with you because time did slow down and it's because we need to be more present. Right. When you are spending your day projecting yourself all over the hobs of hell, either in a futuristic version of self or living in the past, you're not abiding by the present moment. Therefore, time is elusive when you are present, when you are concentrated on your physical body, when you're listening to your heartbeat, when you are just paying attention to the rhythm of your body when you are concentrated on your breath work when you are in touch with all five senses time is very present and although time is a man-made construct time is definitely a lot slower when you are in the present moment so that's where the slowing down of energy has come from now what hasn't slowed down is our hunger is our cravings why because Taurus season is about the five senses. It's about being, you know, very connected to the physical body, what the physical body wants, needs, and desires. Now, granted, there's a very thin line between feeding yourself in a healthy way and just stuffing your face. And that is a very trivial line, especially in Taurus season. Yeah, we need to go low and slow. But if you go so low and slow that you're hardly moving, then that, my friend, is called laziness. That is called slothery. And we do not want to kind of find ourselves on that particular path of that Taurus energy. But the hunger pains, the cravings, are definitely very indicative of where it is that there has been a major shift, a major change, a major transformation of self. Why? Because this new version of self, a higher vibration, a higher frequency, first of all, needs less food. Although in Taurus season, you're probably still eating just as much, but our cravings change. We want to eat a little bit more healthily. And I don't even know if that's a word, but if it's not, then that's going in the Marleyism dictionary. Um, we want to eat a little bit more clean. We want a little bit more substance. We want comfort food. Okay, so that's fine. We're building in momentum. We're strengthening ourselves. That's not a bad deal. But again, just watch the fact that you could be overindulgent. And when we're talking about over or extra, we talk about Jupiter, Jupiter has been in this Taurus energy since May of 2023. He's anticipating his shift into Gemini energy towards the end of May, which means that we are getting to the ending degrees of Taurus energy. And Jupiter, if you are a Taurus, I want an honest you know, feedback here. Um, Jupiter in Taurus energy or in any sign tends to put on a little bit of weight around the middle. Right. Jupiter is over indulgence. Jupiter is extra. Jupiter is drama. He magnifies, turns the volume all the way up. And on Taurus energy, it has to do with those creature comforts. It has to do with stuffing our face filled with comfort foods. And so, again, if you are a Taurus placement and you have noticed a little bit of extra oomph around the belly, around the butt, um, you will be losing that energy, that that extraness, that physicality, you will be losing that once Jupiter actually moves on and starts focusing on the Gemini placements. And again, Gemini's look out, Jupiter's going to be set up in your sign for the next year coming at the end of May. So now y'all are going to have uh, a lot more emphasis, if you will, around the middle. However, because we're kind of moving into these critical crisis degrees at the ending of this Taurus energy, there's going to be more emphasis, more magnification, more volume all the way up, if you will, on those creature comforts, on us really stuffing our face. So just watch out for that. And again, just a good indicator to see where your cravings have changed. There's likely things that your old version of self loved, had to have, that your new version of self is just like, meh, over it. I'm moving on to this now. You know, it's a definitely a more enlightened, more aware type of energy and we are going to be more conscious of what it is that we're actually putting in our bodies so of course there is this slowing down there is this i'm going to say more presentness going on 
Um, especially in the dreamscape. Now, thank you all so much that have kind of, you know, sent me little blurbs about how your dreamscape has changed, what the dream content actually is. But it's very interesting to realize that the majority of people, the dreamscape has become more realistic. Meaning that, yeah, okay, you might be sitting down and, and hanging out with celebrities or going on wackadoodle adventures or, you know, riding dragons or whatever the case may be, but it's realistic. It's almost as if you actually feel like you're there. And again, just reminder, Taurus season heightens the five sentence, sense. Oh, here we go with Mercury. Mercury just has been an evil doer to me over the course of this retrograde. My tongue has been tied in so many different ways. Five senses. It's really not that hard, Mar. Come on. Five senses. Anyways, our five senses are being activated, highly stimulated in our dreamscape as well. So there's like a realistic, let's call it uh, tone to it, you know, abstract thoughts and, and situations and circumstances, maybe, but there's like a realism to it. And it feels very different. And again, we're waking up it's hard to kind of get ourselves going in the morning. Again, let's avoid sloth mode for all intents and purposes. But that sleepiness is kind of lingering. It's kind of, you know, especially in our eyes, we're gonna see those eye crusties, that sand in your eyes, so to speak, this week. And a lot of that is because we are now, this new version of self, um, our environments are becoming a little bit more solidified, a little bit more real, thus the Truman Show ending. But even more than that, the spectrum of light, the ability to perceive colors that we weren't able to perceive before, the spectrum of light is expanding within us. Again, we are humans, right? Light beings. We can experience all the different spectrums of light. However, our physical bodies, our eyeballs, if you will, they are only programmed to see a very small window of that light spectrum, but we're expanding that, we're increasing that, but we're still having a hard time seeing what's going on, where it is that we're going. Thus, the, the I'm gonna call it sleepy crusties in your eyes, but it also feels like maybe you got like, I don't know, oil or makeup or, or something in your eye and there's like this oily haze, this like lubrication, which is just doesn't make sense because our eyes are just dry as F as of late so like how can you have this extra water in your eyes this extra lubrication if you will and still have dryness and still have eye crusties i don't know i mean we're just we're just fantastical human beings at this particular point we are evolving into supernatural human beings at this point so we have to expect some wackadoodle things to take place in our sensory system now with that we still have some dryness going on in our lips. I notice my lips are very sore. They're very cracked, like almost like winter time, which doesn't make any sense to me. But again, uh, the evolution of becoming superhuman is just, you know, something that they don't make a, uh, a handbook for or a manual for. So we're just kind of going with it. But if you remember last week, we talked about how the uh, oils in our body in our hair specifically were changing kind of back not to the norm and again just to get you up to speed here if you were normally oily you found yourself in a dry spot if you were normally dry you found yourself in an oily spot well we're watching those particular extremes kind of balance themselves out and we're kind of trying to get back to our norm but that old norm is gone right we're never going back to the old norm this new version of self doesn't know old norm we only know new norm and so we're establishing new normals for ourselves and so you know the the oiliness is definitely trying to balance themselves out you can figure that out with the earwax with your hair oils with the face oils as well i know the ear it kind of feels like one ear is clogged, waterlogged, earwax, whatever substance you want to kind of label it as, doesn't matter. It's this weird clicking, this weird muffling in one ear over the other. And again, paying attention to what side of your body that these things are happening to can be very clear, very indicative of where it is that you're struggling the most, where it is that you are experiencing the greatest grace and ease with these transitions. Uh, left, right, front, back, all very indicative, all very telling when you put those pieces together. Those are all hints and clues of the major change, the major transformation that we're all currently going through. 
Another interesting thing that I've noticed and that I, I really feel will become a little bit more, I'm going to say dominant, probably as we move into May, more so than the beginning of this week, is that the old injuries that we had are coming back in a way that is, it doesn't feel as intense as when they were, you know, newly or freshly injured. But it's almost like a reminder to the new version of self, like, hey, you know, this old injury was a vital narrative, a vital event that happened to the old version of self. And because we're operating from a new level of consciousness, a new level of awareness, a new level of acting as the observer, we get to actually kind of, I'm going to say, replay and re-experience some of those injuries kind of coming up for acknowledgement, for renewal, to see where it is that they're now again, still alive and well within us, but where it is that they're taking on a different form. So like, for example, uh, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you would know that my whole physical form was just beat up, battered and bruised. I basically went through a full body rehabilitation over the last 15 years um, due to my near death experience. But, you know, side story, side quest, side tangent. Um, a lot of the injuries that I thought I'd done a pretty good job in healing that I haven't experienced in a very long time. It just feels like the residual energies of those particular injuries and experiences are coming back to like be integrated in to have like a different appreciation for how much, you know, you've been able to grow and heal and repair those particular areas within yourself. It's not like they're coming back, you know, I'll give it to you this way, because again, I have to be literal, sometimes too literal for some people, because if y'all trust me, if y'all could read through my DMs and my inbox you would realize that there is a massive, massive group of people out there that don't have a sweet Jesus clue what the F is going on. With just literal concepts, I'm not even talking about consciousness and awakening and blah, blah, blah. Like literally, you got to break it down in simple, simple terms for some people. And I just, whew, and that's why it's so hard to talk sometimes. Um, a bit, a, again, being this public because you have a whole audience that is just so divided in different levels of awareness. And so let me be very literal. If you broke your leg when you were eight, I'm not saying that you're going to break your leg again. OK, that's not what I'm saying. However, maybe the growing pains that you felt in trying to repair that when you were eight, maybe you're going to have some leg cramps. Maybe the scar that you have from, you know, breaking your arm when you were 15, maybe that scar is going to start getting sore or getting itchy. Does it mean you're going to break your arm again? No. Maybe you had surgery, you know, when you were in your 20s. And maybe it's not that you're, it's not like you're going to have that same surgery again, but maybe that surgery site is triggering a sensation in your physical body to allow the memories of what it is that you went through to come back so that you can observe it from a different level of awareness. That's what I'm talking about. So I just needed to give that kind of like disclaimer in there just to avoid a huge amount of people going, does that mean I'm going to break my leg? I broke my leg when I was 12. Does that mean I'm going to break my leg this month? No, that's not what I meant. Anywho, um, the old the old injuries are coming back because we have a new energy filtrating through our body, through our, remit our meridians, uh, through our chakra system. We've gone through the alignment. We've gone through the integration. We're going through it still. But now we have to have some flashbacks to truly appreciate how strong our body is, our ability to heal said injuries. A, I'm going to say a good little uh, reminder of how far it is that we've come in certain instances. So that's what I mean when old injuries are going to kind of, you know, rise to the surface. Once again, we have to have a new level of awareness to reflect upon those pivotal points that happened to us in the old version of self that we are now going to be appreciating from a totally different level of awareness. Okay. So I feel like because the old version of self kind of collapsed with those older timelines that we were struggling to collapse prior to the eclipse energy, because the old version of self is also being kind of wrapped up in a pretty little suitcase in our subconscious mind, we're also going to see that in the dreamscape as well. I probably should have talked about that when I was talking about the dreamscape, but you know, me 
making my list of notes, it wasn't together. So now I'm, you know, bouncing all over the place. However, the, I'm going to say flashbacks coming up with the injuries, the flashbacks coming up in your memories, the flashbacks coming up in your dreamscape. This is all to kind of bring a certain sense of closure to that old version of self. Now, are we mad at that old version of self? Hell no. This is shadow work. We need to love that old version of self. That old version of self went through some shit in order to get us here. We're exactly where it is we need to be. We need to give thanks, attitude of gratitude for those old versions of self. Every version of yourself that you had to be in order for you to be this version of self needs your love and acceptance. That is what shadow work is. And again, I know when I went on a whole big shadow rant uh, in the mood guide for the full moon in Scorpio that a lot of you seem to appreciate because again, there's a huge amount of confusion on what shadow work actually is. And again, because everybody seems to be at different points in their understanding in their journey here, this is about understanding all the versions of self that we had to be in order to get here and not cast them away, not pretend that they didn't exist. We have to love them. We have to appreciate them. We have to integrate them in order to operate from our wholeness. That's what we're doing right now in Taurus season is we're integrating the old version of self with the new version of self. We are integrating the new level of awarenesses with the old levels of awarenesses. We are just integrating. It is going to take some time and heads up. Not that I want to get ahead of myself here, but by the time we do this whole integration process, we're going to be moving into Gemini season, which offers us options and opportunities. And it is going to be the struggle of the inner twins, the old version of self, the new version of self, the ego self, the higher self throughout the whole entirety of Gemini season. Gemini season offers us options and opportunities to level up each and every single pretty much day in our mental plane in our options and our opportunities to see the greater, grander perspective. So as we're going through Taurus season and integrating the new version of self, then we move into Gemini season, then we're tested, right? We're given options, you know, those, those little, you know, things that you come across on social media, like, would you prefer this or that? Would you like this or that? Well, this is what we're doing in Gemini season. So just when we anchor in the new version of self, then we're going to kind of be tested, baited, if you will. Do you like this, which is new and unfamiliar, and we have no clue what could even come out of it, or that, the old, that is predictable and familiar, but going to keep you in looping patterns and looping behavior. So this is what we're building in, in Taurus energy. Um, because Mercury, and again, Mercury is going to be in his rulership when we move into Gemini season, but he's not there yet. He just woke up from his unconscious slumber of being retrograde for many, many weeks. Um, because Mercury is now moving forward, we're going to feel some sinus congestion. We're going to feel some stuffiness in the head. We're also going to feel like there's too many tabs open in our head space. We're going to have a very hectic mind, if you will. Um, and a lot of that is just because we're looking to edge forward. We're looking to move forward, looking to get our mind right. We're looking to get focused. We're also going through a huge renovation of the third eye, which is smack dab in the middle of your forehead. Again, really creating a lot of energy, a lot of pressure in this headspace. Um, but we are, because we're in Taurus season and we are relying more on the physical senses than our intuition and our third eye, this is the time when the third eye has a little bit more time to kind of evolve, grow, develop, if you will. We will be putting it into full on action in Gemini season because, again, it's going to come down to intuition or intellect in Gemini energy. But we're not there yet. We're really just trying to anchor in and get comfortable and get familiar with our new physical form in this physical meat suit, in this physical vessel. Um, but the headspace, the sinus congestion, you know, the stuffiness in the ears, um, all of that is just indicators that there has been a shift in the headspace, in our perspective, in our awareness, in our understanding. I suspect, and again, this, this has a lot to do um, with Venus and Mars moving into their respective rulerships in the final days of April, but I suspect that there's going to be a lot of heart activations, not in a bad way. 
But in needing to really get grounded, really get anchored with what it is that our heart wants us to do, and therefore manage our energy, our impulse, our urges, again, Mars and Aries energy, to not take action out of turn. Now that means that we are gonna be in an action point. Again, we've been waiting for this action point, this green light go ahead for so freaking long. But we gotta get very clear. Mind, okay, so Mercury, he's gone direct. Mind is now moving forward. Heart, that's Venus and Taurus energy. She will need to get grounded and anchored and truly understand what it is that she's motivated to pursue. And then the physical body is Mars. And we're going to have to get in alignment, mind, body, and soul before we can take action and make moves. Now it's gonna happen very, very fast. However, we have to keep ourselves in check. Again, this is the year of eight. This is about how much power and control you have over your mind, over your emotions, over your physical form. And so we have to make sure that we're not jumping into anything, that we're not acting on impulse, we're not acting out some fantasy of our desires without checking in with ourselves mind body soul has to be in a healthy equation before we take any actions before we make any moves that means that there's going to be a jitteriness that starts kicking in towards the end of the week because we're going to have to like tame our inner realm there's going to be you know just bouncing from one thing to the next there's going to be a lot of different ideas popping through our head that we want to take action upon but we need to be operating from a state of wholeness from a state of completion. This means that you may find that there is an issue in your mouth, with your gums, with the roof of your mouth, roof of your mouth. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness, Mercury. If he was here, I would swing at him. Um, the roof of your mouth. Maybe you're biting your tongue. Maybe you bit your lip. Maybe you bit some food and it scraped the roof of your mouth. Maybe you have a sore spot on a certain tooth. There is a whole lot of energy building up in our mouths. And I think it's interesting because, of course, there's a lot of fire building. You know, Mercury is in Aries energy, so it's fire building, but we don't know what to do with it yet. So we're just kind of holding it in. It's bouncing around. It's internalized. Thus, the irritation with the gums, with the tongue, with the lips, with the roof of your mouth. Um, that being said... Now, this isn't the, the the tooth sweaters or the teeth sweaters. Again, just don't even come at me for my English here today because I'm lucky I'm even being able to speak. Um, but I'm going to call it morning breath. You know, the morning breath tongue that you get? And I don't even care. Like, I hope you're brushing your teeth and you're, you know, scraping that tongue and everything else. Doesn't matter what you pull out as far as your hygiene practices go. It's going to feel like there's a lingering morning breath tongue kind of sticking with us for the at least the first part of this week. And it's going to feel kind of gross and it's going to kind of taint the taste, if you will, of all the things that we're trying to enjoy. Nothing's going to taste the same. And again, another indicator that the new version of self craves different tastes, different experiences, different textures, different foods. So pay attention to that. I feel like, and I guess this goes with the itchiness, um, the itchiness is a great sign of healing. So again, pay attention to the areas of your body that are kind of getting itchy. But I think for many of us, this is going to be on our head, like in our scalp area, itchy patches in our hair, itchiness on the back of our neck. There's going to be some neck, the neck stiffness. I apologize, y'all. I'm not even going back to edit this. I want to be as real and raw and authentic and transparent as possible. And I want y'all to experience the frustration that I have being tongue tied because of this mercurial energy not being stabilized as of yet. It has been a tough go uh, for me in particularly. I know that many people have struggled throughout this mercury retrograde, but man, the tongue tied situation has just got to go. It's just frustrating me. Anywho, I digress. The neck stiffness there's a lot of rigidity in our neck again we're in Taurus season the physical form the neck especially the vertebrae in the neck are where the kundalini energies come up from the base of our spine to hit the pineal gland to release that milk and honey that of course is going to go down trickle through all the 33 vertebrae and actually plant a seed of creation and of awakening once again within us things are getting blocked 
between that shoulder space, we are kind of bearing a lot of physical weight. We are feeling the weight of our physicalities tenfold at this point. And so our neck is essentially stiff, but there's some itchiness there as well, which is a huge indicator that something is healing, that we are opening those particular meridian channels up and we are going to be feeling that energy actually bust through that rigidity, that blockage, if you will. We're going to be feeling that energy, especially as we move through May. It's going to be like blast off and again, adding to the head pressure. Now, here's the thing. Our inner realm, yeah, it could be buzzing, but the sense of peace, the sense of contentment, the sense of this beautiful element of quiet and silence is just a beautiful thing. And this is something that you all need to take a mental snapshot of an energetic snapshot of because this isn't going to last very long, especially once we dive into Gemini season. However, appreciate it while it's here. This is what Taurus season is all about, being present in the moment, having the attitude of gratitude for the small little things. And it just feels very comfy, very cozy in our inner realms. And I love that. I love that for all of us. Um, the last thing that I kind of want to talk about. Oh, no, sorry, I lied. I got two more things that I want to talk about. Okay, so the second last thing that I want to talk about is the sweatiness coming from our palms and coming from our feet. So as I kind of, you know, chatted about last week, um, the vibration and frequency of Mother Earth herself, Gaia, has shifted. We are the conduit of energies that bridge the Earth's energies to the higher realms of intelligence, the cosmos, if you will. All the energy goes in us and through us, back and forth and back and forth. We are the conduit. We are the energetic vessel. We are the alchemists. And that's why if we take on some not so nice energies from the collective and we have the ability because we've done the work within ourselves to transmute it into something lighter, something brighter with more information, more knowledge, more love, we can send it back to the collective and we feel the shift, the vibration, the frequency of the collective shift because of the inner work that we're able to do individually speaking. And then we come together as a collective, we share that vibration and frequency, we spread it over the earth like a net. And so the shift of the energy that is changing is due to Mother Earth herself changing. Our feet is what connects us to Mother Earth. So again, kick off those rebel souls, get barefoot, go out and really connect with the Earth. But our feet, the bottoms of our feet are sweaty and they're kind of gross and clammy. And our feet might even be cold, but yet we have some squishy, squishy sweatness going on between our toes. And that is because the energy, the let's call it frequency is changing. And that means that the connectors, our feet are also changing in response to the higher vibrations and frequencies that we are now channeling through our physical form. Equally happening to our palm chakras, because again, the whole purpose is that we are being presented with opportunities here very shortly to test our creator energies out. Now, this is just a testing period. And let me, I don't want to get too heavy into this topic and theme. I'll cover it when it becomes a little bit more in our faces and we have to understand what's going on. But I need you to think of it this way. We've just built a car. The car is our physical body. We just upgraded the motor, let's say. Now we're in recalibration mode. We're testing it out to make sure that everything is firing off in the right kinds of timing. We are essentially going to take this baby out for a rip. We're going to see what she can do. We are going to put the pencil to the metal. We are going to see what she's capable of, but we're not, we're not committing that she's free yet. This is just a testing period. We're going to have to pull her into the garage and make some tweaks in order to get her to her optimal capacity. So let me just say this. We are going to be presented here shortly with opportunities to actually, you know, test our creator abilities out, which are, our palm chakras, that's how we, you know, we, we take energy in through the left. We exert energy out through the right. This is why our palm chakras are getting all sweaty and gooey as well, because the energy is building there. We're almost in testing period. We're almost able to see what this new vessel is capable of, but we're not there yet. And again, just keep it in the back of your mind that we're not, you know, we're not giving a green light, go ahead to rip it out of the garage and to hit the roads are running and to stay, you know, just free pace and just travel around the world. This is just a testing period. This is like, you're a mechanic. You just put this car back together. 
you need to take it out, see if there's any shakes or wobbles or if anything's misfiring or if, if the car just says, hey, I need this tweaked. That's when you bring her back in the garage and you do what you gotta do to make sure that the car is acting at its optimal capacity. So that's the time period, that's the testing period that we are about to move into. But nonetheless, the energies are building, creating some sweaty palms and some sweaty feet. Okay, so the official last thing that I wanna talk about here is that this week we are going to have, and depending on you know where it is that you're at in your journey and where it is that you're at with this new version of self and blah, 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 you're either gonna have a short day or you're gonna have a tall day. Okay, so last week we had bobblehead week, right? Where our heads were just a bigger than we thought that they should be. And it definitely played into the change and transformation of stuffing our expanded soul self back into the physical vessel in which we're currently operating. But short days are you come out, you reach for the mug that you always reach for in order to get your coffee prepared and suddenly you can't reach it. And you're like, hmm, guess I didn't wake up as tall as I did yesterday because you're obviously having a short day. Equally, you could have a tall day where all of a sudden you go to put something in the sink and it feels like you are like seven feet tall. Regardless, please understand that this is your soul's energy, the new version of self that expanded consciousness, testing the parameters of the physical vessel. So no, you may not actually be seven feet tall, but you're going to feel it. No, you might not be three feet tall, but you're going to feel it. And this is the testing period of trying to align, to integrate, to amalgamate the new version of self in the parameters of the physical vessel that houses our soul and our spirit. So, you know, it doesn't mean one thing over the other, like, oh, if you're having a short day, you know, your soul is short. That's not what it means. Okay. So please don't take it so literal. But what I'm saying is, is that we're experimenting with perspective, which of course, having a short day is going to give you a totally different perspective versus having a tall day. And we're also just testing the boundaries of where the comfortability of our energetic body finds itself in our physical form. So sometimes you have to have a big day in order to realize, no, this this just doesn't feel in alignment. Maybe you have to have a small or a short day to realize, huh, I kind of feel like nobody sees me. Uh, That could be a good indicator on where it is that you're at in your healing journey. But nonetheless, we are going to have this accordion effect, let's call it, one day feeling like you are, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, And the other day, like you are an ant. And what we will find is that somewheres in the middle, and again, Taurus energy, Taurus season, somewheres in the middle, we can blend in comfortability. We can blend this new version of self into the physical form and actually feel like we're operating from a state of wholeness. So definitely watch out for those particular experiences. So guys, I am officially done. I have ticked off all the things that I wanted to talk about. I have covered all of the things that I feel like I should have brought to the forefront of all of our awarenesses. So I guess I'm going to leave it at that. But not before I thank you. I thank you once again for not only tuning in, not only showing up for me, but for showing up for yourself. I have, I hope you have a beautiful ending closure to April. I hope we all bust into May with this new mood, this new attitude. I send you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.